at least two people have reportedly turned down honours from Liz Truss. One of them said it's humiliating to accept a nomination from the UK's shortest serving Prime Minister. Her list has 14 people on it. That is one person for every three and a half days of her 49 day leadership. Joining me live is former Conservative Minister David Meller, also former political secretary to Tony Blair, Don McTiernan. Good to have you both aboard. Thank you so much. Let's start with you, David. Uh, my gosh, um, a very, very short term as Prime Minister. Some people might say so embarrassingly short that really the right thing to do would have been to hang one's head in shame and disappear into utter obscurity <laughs> and possibly lose the honours list. Possibly think, well, you know, don't think so really because, you know, pomp, circumstance and honours, not appropriate when you've been, you've been aboard for such a short time. You don't need me, do you? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you really don't need me. It's a nonsense. But then, of course, a lot of this honour system is a nonsense. Whether she served for 49 days or whether, you know, like Boris, she served for a couple of years or like Cameron, uh, she served for half a dozen years, mm. maybe, maybe even longer. I'm trying to forget. But basically, <laughs> what we have here are prime ministers who are incapable, it would appear, of understanding that the House of Lords is a legislative part of the legislature and they stuff the House of Lords with cronies and mates and it's just, well, it, 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 it's impossible to have any regard for. I mean, okay, there's some good people in the House of Lords, mm -hmm. just like there's some good people on the local tube, but there's equally some people who shouldn't really be either on the tube or in or, or, or getting an honour or put in the House of Lords. And this just, is just to explain, when, when, you, when you say, uh, David, you know, the House of uh, Lords is a legislature, so therefore it matters that you don't just give people seats in the Lords as a present, as a reward. You know, you could give them a scented candle. You know, you could give them a really large box of chocolates, but you don't. You give them a peerage or a daymood <laughs> or something instead. Can you explain why that matters, what a legislature is and why we need a certain mm. calibre of person only after a certain level of attainment to be to be uh, allowed entry there. Well, I think it's because the House of Lords is part of the legislative process. Every bill that goes through Parliament has to go through both the House of Lords and the House of Commons. And it would be helpful if the House of Lords consisted of people of experience and commitment and capability above and beyond a lot of the people who've been put there. And when you look at Boris, you know, he puts a 29-year-old girl in the House of Lords. I'm not against 29-year-old girls. I just think they should wait a bit before they're stuck in the House of Lords. I mean, let's bring John McTernan into all of this. Um, you know, a, a, a short-lived Prime Minister, an ignominious departure, a highly questionable legacy, some mortgage payers still suffering, you know, acute daily privation as a result of that very brief term. And yet, an honours list is accorded to her and 14 people are on it. I mean, what are your thoughts on the whole thing? Well, it, it would be hilarious if it wasn't tragic. Because the, <laughs> the one thing for which the um, uh, the trust quartet government is going to be remembered for a very long time is what the Financial Times call the moronic risk premium, the risk premium that's on our interest rates that is feeding through into mortgages. And as Torsten Bell of the Resolution Foundation said only last week, people in Britain have only had half of the pain uh, of the uh, of the moronic risk premium. So as this honours list is revealed, and as these peers are appointed to the House of Lords. So other people will be getting letters saying your mortgage has gone up by three or four or 500 pounds a month. Um, so there's something very despicable about this, not accepting that the 49 days were a disaster. They weren't a privilege for the prime minister to serve. It was not a privilege for us to have this prime minister and it should not be in the hands of that prime minister to hand out baubles and gongs and i'm glad that at least one person uh, has had the uh, sense to say no to to uh, understand that this would be a contemptible honor to have it wouldn't be an honor it feels like you know it should be an order of contempt of some sort shouldn't it given the record of that of that short uh, but disastrous reign so um i think it, it it's in danger of bringing disrepute on the whole system of our of, our, of honours that we give out, many of which are deserved by the people across the country who work hard to get them and see them given out in this way for a 
for, for, for no contribution to public service. In fact, for the opposite, um, I think it does bring the system into disrepute. David Mellor, do we need some kind of acknowledgement that all prime ministers are equal, but some are more equal than others? And therefore, <laughs> you know, some deserve the largesse of bestowing all sorts of delightfulness upon those who have shored them up through their excellent endeavours. And others who've been catastrophic failures don't deserve that at all and forfeit that. And maybe also forfeit lifelong police protection and maybe also forfeit the right to parade out at coronations and royal <laughs> funerals and other, you know, magnificent events of state, maybe should stay at home in the kitchen making a piece of toast. You know, do we do we uh, get to rank prime ministers and say, listen, look, you're a pretty shameful record here. You were absolutely awful, below par, and therefore you don't get any of the good stuff afterwards. None of them should have the right to nominate people, certainly not to go into the House of Lords. And, you know, Going back to that example of this girl that Boris put in, age 29, do you realise if she lives, I don't know, what, what age do you think you're going to get to? 80s? Mm. So she can yeah. be in the House of Laws for nearly 60 years. It's a joke. And it's a joke in quite bad taste, actually, because the House of Lords, I come back to the point, is a crucial part of our legislative arrangements. And I don't know how long we can carry on having a House of Lords constituted like this if people persist in putting, you know, people in for no better reason and they quite like them. So what would you say, David, are the sorts of reasons that would be acceptable to you? What kinds of people, what kinds of reasons, what sorts of motivations? Well, it used to be that uh, the only people who went in were people who'd had quite senior careers in politics. Quite a lot of them don't go now because they, you know, they don't accept the appointment because they know what um, um, the House of Lords amounts to. A lot of the ones who go, I remember one chap said to me, you know, you get the best table in a restaurant if you're in the House of Lords. Oh, I hardly dare tell him I used to get the best table in a restaurant, whether I was in the House of Lords or not. But you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It's for social climbers. It's for people who want to say, do you realise, my dear, Heaven knows what you've been for all the years we've married me, but now you're a lady. <laughs> I mean, it's pathetic, but that's the way it is. And John, uh, who I've known for 30 years and have the highest regard for, John will agree with me. There's an awful, there's a lot of social element in, or in this, and the House of Lords should be more than just a way of saying, I'm Lady Blank, and uh, you know, <laughs> this is my husband. Lord Blank of Trotskyshire or whatever. Yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> John, is it ridiculous? And if it is, what should take its place? What should happen in its stead if it really is ridiculous? I think loads of people watching and listening will agree it's absolutely absurd. I mean, you know, you know Baroness Bra and uh, various other appointments, <laughs> yes. you know, highly uh, questionable uh, and questioned by many at the time. Oh, look, I think the... The issue of Lord's reform is probably on the agenda now in a big way, and it may not have been uh, the intention of Liz Truss uh, or, or Boris Johnson, but they have dragged down the name of the House of Lords by stuffing it full of cronies. And it, it, the issue does become, what should you do? There's a number of reform ideas out there. Gordon Brown produced a big uh, uh, report for, for Keir Starmer moving to something which was directly elected in some form uh, that in some way reflected the regions, the nations of the country, uh, the, the great cities and their mayors. There are all kinds of ways to represent the interests of uh, the UK and make sure that all of the UK is represented there. I think the big thing you want to do, as David was saying, you want to preserve the important revising function, spending time looking at bills. Mm -hmm. In my view, there are far too many bits of legislation being rushed through by this government, guillotined in a day, bounced through um, to try to to try to try to cow the, uh, the House of Lords as well as the House of Commons from looking at the detail of it. And I think you legislate in haste, but you repent at length after that. So keep the deliberative part of the process. Bring in. Uh, the, the politics of the whole of our country, uh, the, the, the culture of the country, the nature of the country. Uh, if we're going to have bishops, shouldn't we also uh, have representatives of other religions? So those kinds of, those are debates we need to have. I think we, we, we can't rush into reforming the House of Lords. I personally am quite small C conservative on the constitution, changing, changing a thing that's built up over so many centuries. Uh, you, could, you, could, you could lose good things in an institution. But the thing is, this kind of action is vandalism. 
uh, to the institution, very unconservative in my view. Um, and it is a shame, as David said, that many of the people who have the greatest experience in cabinet, in parliament, in the House of Commons, are now declining to go into the House of Commons. You look, um, we've had a couple of prime ministers, uh, or three, John Major, uh, Tony Blair, my old boss, Gordon, Gordon Brown, Brown. All, of them, all of them declined to go into the, to the House. I imagine um, we'll soon be seeing uh, Baron Boris of Johnson uh, entering the House. I can't imagine he'd uh, you know, put, set aside the opportunity to, to wear ermine. And I, I imagine with this honours list being, uh, being touched around that, that Liz Trust fans herself in the House of Lords too. Um, but I really think um, the decent thing uh, is to stop this 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 power for this resignation honours. Tony didn't do a resignation honours. Gordon didn't do a resignation honours. Uh, I think it's best uh, being something that's now laid in abeyance. All right, now it is August, so we are allowed occasionally to be lightly frivolous and slightly frothy. So I do hope you'll forgive me, gentlemen, if I do mention one other story. This is MP turned reality star Matt Hancock, <laughs> who channeled his inner Ken from Barbie. I'm sure you're both addicted to TikTok and never mo move a single moment without checking it. If you haven't seen it, have a look. So that's Matt Hancock as Ken from Barbie, the movie. Uh, David Mellor, if you can contain any feelings of rising nausea, how do you feel about that one? Excuse me, I'm just taking my head out of the bucket. Right, here I am. Yes. Um, those whom the gods wish to destroy, they first make mad. Don't they? <laughs> um, you know, and what can I say about this? This is lunacy writ large. But what I'd love to be able to say to him, hey, Matt, you used to be a serious guy once. Why are yeah. you now becoming a, a sort of licensed end of peer moron? <laughs> I mean, he is currently still a sitting MP, isn't he? He is still an MP. Still <laughs> yes. an MP. So, so John, um, he's still an MP. He's meant to be at work, isn't he? He's meant to be a surgery in his constituency doing something. He is meant, he is meant to something. be at work. Oh, I, I, he should be serving his constituents. You, there are many people who do sterling work on the back bench. Look, I... Like David, Matt Hancock used to be a serious politician who had serious thoughts about digital application, digital uh, to, 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 to public services. And I know this is meant to be a, a little bit of light fun, but it's the balance of all of these things. Um, if he was at the same time, you know, when he was, when he was Secretary for Health, he faced the pandemic, but he didn't leave any programs behind about using tech to improve uh, the mm -hmm. health service. And so it just seems as a bit of a mockery. And it, and it goes back to the, the, the list trusts and list. There are too many things which tell you that this is a government that's not serious. The Tory MPs really have kind of checked out. They've checked out, the government's checked out serious policy, um, the, and, and, the, and their backbenchers, you know, look, there's all kinds of things we could talk about. There's this, this TikTok, there's the fact that Nadine Doris is still resigning with immediate effect. Um, uh, some months after she promised to resign with immediate effect. Mm. Um, it just feels as though uh, this is a, the, the Tory party in Parliament need to be put out of their misery. Um, <laughs> and definitely most of us from watching that Matt Hancock uh, video probably feel, feel the need to be put out of our own misery. I, I, but what's I... he going to do? This is the question. Yeah. I mean, what, what's he going to do? What's he trying to be? I mean, when he's walking along this yes. beat miming, What's in his head? What is he thinking? We well, should I have think a little. He's either, I think and he's auditioning. Best, you know, isn't he auditioning for Strictly or auditioning for the Masked I, Singer or auditioning for his, right. next, I I, his next I role in reality right. TV? Isn't that what it is? It's pretty clear. I mean, you can't yeah, even or, put on drink, or another... drink. He was abstemious, you know, but it's just ridiculous, really. Gentlemen. But I'm glad you have seen it. It's given me a laugh. Well, I'm glad you're laughing. It's lovely to have you both aboard. Thank you very much indeed for being so accommodating and for restraining your, your, your impulses to comment in more vivid language, I'm sure, at that Matt Hancock extravaganza.